guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Princess Rani here, and I hope you're doing well. On this channel, we talk about Christian faith, lifestyle, as well as natural hair. This is going to be a lifestyle video. I'm going to be doing my makeup, and I'm going to talk to you guys about me quitting my job. Yes, you heard that correctly. I just left my job. I really want to take the time to talk through it. There's going to be some things that, um, are very personal that I will be sharing, but some things that, you know, are too, too personal or that I'm just not ready to share or I don't feel that to share, I just let me share. So just post with fair see if you feel like this is missing something or you have additional questions, feel free to ask. But um, I'm also going to be really transparent with what I feel comfortable sharing and what I don't. So if you're interested, because <laughs> I already started this introduction, it's very long, definitely stay tuned for the video. But if you haven't already, I don't know what you're waiting on. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Yes, we're waiting on you. Click the subscribe button and also the bell button so you're always notified whenever we post a new video. And I hope this video helps someone. Every time I post a video, I really hope and pray that it helps someone. So, I'm going to be doing a makeup tutorial, to be honest. I don't know what I'm doing. So, this is just a get ready with me and a chit chat. So, Bear with your girl, because it's a lot. We got a lot to talk about. We got a lot of updates. But I'm going to try to stick to the task and stay focused, okay? So, <laughs> let me start with moisturizing my face first and foremost. But, um, yeah, we're going to get right into this video. This is what I'm using. I like to use that as a moisturizer because my face tends to get oily sometimes, tends to get dry sometimes. It is a combination of many things, but this is like a really rich um, protection. It moisturizes it, but it's for normal to dry skin because my skin, again, is combination. And it's really confusing. So. Yeah, I'm moisturizing my face before the primer, before anything else. Sorry, I heard something. So, as many of you guys know, and like if you've been here with my journey from the very, very beginning, you know that I was um, unemployed for nine months while in undergrad, and it was like the latter part of my undergrad year. So I left my previous job January of 2018 and was told do not apply for anything until I give you the okay this was you know obviously God is telling me this so thankfully I already had money put aside I already had money saved up and this was something that I felt led to do and nine months later was when I got the okay and to be honest I didn't check LinkedIn I didn't check job postings I didn't update my resume I wasn't looking for jobs or any of that it was just okay God you said not to apply so I'm not gonna do anything that's gonna tempt me and so I think God really opened my eyes and my heart to a different career field that I was planning to go to which was teaching I was planning to go to law school you know and God had other plans and so I'm trying to give you guys this backstory because I really want you guys to understand the story in its entirety of like why this change or why this experience is so important and really um, eye-opening for me. So yeah, when I decide to quit a job, it's because God is like, all right, girl, your time's up. Let's go. Right? So that's what happened essentially with um, the previous job I was at. And at that point, I was like, okay, you know, whatever God says to do, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to listen, and I'm going to follow, yeah, yeah. So that's what I was doing. And sorry, I'm just taking out all the makeup and stuff so I can see what I have and figure out what I'm actually going to be using right now. Um, do I have primer? <gasps> I have primer? Oh, All right, this is why I got to take everything out because I need to see what I have. There's no way I don't. That so it's easier for me. All right, everything's out. I know what I have. I can see them all. Perfect. Now we can continue with the rest of the story. So, as I was saying, right, um, didn't apply for anything, and this is what I felt led to do. And then when I finally checked LinkedIn was when I um, saw, like, all these different, like, 
um, companies reaching out, but one company reached out multiple times, like months apart. So like maybe February and then maybe like July. And then when I saw it was like September. So yeah, so my months, right? So I reached out to them. I was like, hey, I didn't see these messages before. Is it still available? Before I knew it, I was on the phone, all those things. Uh, fast forward, I got the job. And so I've been teaching at this job for about four and a half years at this point. This is me fast forwarding to when I um, decided to leave. My first year was atrocious. Like there was maybe one or two people that really stood out and really impacted me and were part of the reason that I'm still a teacher today, in addition to some of the kids and parents. Ooh, I was just getting into it and then my SD card got filled up, but whatever. So my experience with that, my principal was just like, for lack of better terminology, just plain evil. She did not like me for whatever reason. And I know it's because I'm new, fresh out of college and did not have much experience and didn't know what I was doing, let's be honest. And was really struggling, but I reached out and I advocated for myself. So like, even with paper trails and all those things, I reached out and did my part. So it wasn't like I didn't care and I wasn't trying. Um, so that was a major thing. There were days I would go to work and be like very overwhelmed. And, concerned that I would be fired and just not know if I would still have a job. But at the same time, I knew this was where God was placing me and I needed to just show up every day and continue until he said, girl, time to go. So that year, you know how they're like, well, if you can drive in New York, you can drive anywhere. Or if you can survive this thing, you can survive anything. I feel like that was my first year. Like it showed me that like, yes, you went through all these crazy things that usually don't happen to everyone in their first year. But you survived, you made it through, showing that, yeah, you're ready for any single challenge that comes your way. So second year, um, you know, uh, middle of the year, or not middle, like March of that year, we were in the pandemic. So it was a little bit harder, but like that was like, yeah, I got you, girl. And um, <laughs> we had pandemic. So that started in March. And then I was remote that following year. And then all that, all that other stuff happened. So anyways, I was in school last year in person, it was their first year back, and the kids that I had in first grade, the year we went in that March time, um, were my kids. And like, we had a blast. We had a great time, we learned so much, um, but most importantly, like, we had fun. Like, we learned how to build in our social skills. Like, I feel like those kids definitely grew with me, and I grew along with them too. Um, and we just learned so much about each other and really built a beautiful bond which I'm forever grateful for, right? So fast forward to this school year. I am no longer in the grade that I was with the kids in third grade, now I'm in first grade. And of course I have experience with first grade. So I was like, yes, I'm in first grade, this is where I wanna go, set me. So um, I decided to go to first grade and it was a lot. The kids were great, the parents were great. But this year, there were so many things that were being changed in our uh, network as a whole that, to be honest, I didn't agree with. And obviously, if you are any adult that I believe if you've done education, but also if you've done psychology, if you know about um, the developmental process, like for different things within like the growth and how child, if you know anything about childhood development, or child development in general, which you should. As an educator, I feel like everyone should have a course on like the different um, the different stages of development um, because it's so important to really understand like what expectations to have of kids and what things they can do, and then also see like outliers, those kids that are like unable to like be the kids that are not developed or not developing at the correct rate. Uh, versus those that are advanced and just understanding like who falls within the range or who does not right so all the things that they were changing um and i've had parents come to me and like you know you're treating these you not you're treating not you but it's like you guys expect these children first graders to be treated like adults like yes they should have responsibilities but for example if they don't have their homework you're like, okay, so you're gonna miss out on this thing, you're gonna miss out on that thing, versus like um, reaching out to the parent that's like, hey, like, please ensure that you're packing or reminding them to pack their, like, it's not on the child phone. So, like, a lot of kids just kind of felt that pressure as if, like, adults are saying, like, 
I need to be able to do this on my own, which I have never tried to message to any child. It's more so like, I want you to learn this. Like, this is something that your mom or dad does every day, but I want you to be able to learn to do it. Not that I expect you to know how to do it on your own. But eventually, next year and the following year, these are things that gradually um, you'll be you'll need to know how to do on your own. That was the extent of that conversation with those kids, right? So the year continues, and then there's different things that I am being made privy to, whether they're from parents, whether they're from other educators, or just in general. Information that, to be honest, I probably shouldn't have known. I should have been hush hush. It should have been something that like was swept under the rug, but I was very hyper alert in regards to things that were happening. And things that were changing because I've been there for so long and the way things were being addressed because hello I <laughs> in case you guys don't know my background is uh, I went to school for criminal justice but I had a double minor in psychology and in English however that I, I can see now why <laughs> teaching makes sense but um Afterwards, I did a master's degree, a dual degree in um, general education, general education as well as special education. So there's certain things that like I'm just really aware of that should happen in a school and should happen in a certain kind of classroom and that should not happen in a school or a certain kind of classroom. So yeah, I was in and out of the principal's office multiple times. Like if it wasn't once a week, it was it was at least once a week or every other week, I should say. And it was like about concerns that I have, concerns that parents have, concerns that kids have, concerns that, like, you know, other educators may have. Like, I'm advocating for all of these things. I'm like, I don't agree with this. I don't think this works. I don't. And it's like, to the point that I got so overwhelmed and I had to schedule an impromptu meeting to not only talk with my principal, but also with, um, the lead for our grade and there were just certain things there were personal things as well uh professional things that just like yes we were cool and we got along really well but now you're making things personal and i'm feeling really unsafe in this building because you know i came in with a mission like i am so gung-ho about my kids that have i my kids that need additional support I am so supportive and I feel like I don't want a kid to be labeled or like receive services that they don't need right but that's a waste that's a waste of time that's also a waste of money because like what are they doing but also I don't want kids to not receive services I need services I, I don't want to lie I would never be that person to lie and say this child is getting the service and unfortunately from parents I have found out that they were being lied to and it's besides the point right now who was lying to them but it was so much that i had to like question i was like where did you get this information from and then in the sense of like safety me advocating and like speaking up for myself i also felt now targeted now you're gonna say i'm not a great teacher now you're gonna say i'm not doing my part now you're gonna gaslight me into saying that i am not showing up every day for kids so, all of this is happening while I'm trying to stay afloat and I'm trying to help kids and I am dealing with the death of a family member. And I'm like, okay, you know what? This, this is what my family member will want me to do. This is what I, um, you know, like all these things, right? This is how I can support them. This is how I can do X, Y, and Z in my classroom because at the end of the day, I show up every day for kids. I don't show up because my boss needs me to, to be honest. I don't show up and it's not even about the money because let's be honest, I was getting all of that. So I showed up every single day for those kids and I loved on those kids. I really cared about those kids and I still do. Um, granted, I'm not in the same space, but those kids like have a very special place in my heart. But one thing that I realized within the time that I was there, even my very first year, I feel like the only reason that I really survived my first year was because I was like, I made a commitment to these kids and they've already experienced so many teachers leaving. I'm not going to be that person. I'm not going to be that person. And then when I was switched to get support and like working with the teacher directly, um, 
I was like, you know, she needs somebody. And she like is really supportive of me. And she's like, I don't want you to leave at all. Like she was very clear that like she wasn't getting the support that she needed in that school year. And she was just so grateful that somebody else was there. So I showed up every day for those kids and for her. Like, because at the end of the day, I'm doing my part, but I also know how hard the job is. And at the end, we're partners, we're, we're teammates. Like we're in this together. When I'm struggling, like she's got it. When she's struggling, I've got it. Like it's a partnership, right? Guys, I'm struggling with my eyebrows. Let me pause for a second because it looks crazy. I'm gonna do a little bit of base here. I don't really know what <laughs> what I'm doing with my eyebrows. My eyeshadow just here, but something. I don't know just yet, but this is me packing my lid. All right, so where was I? Yeah, so I was showing up every single day because, like, I was so needed, right? And I. I realized lately that I was making decisions in regards to like I'm so committed to these kids as if they were my home like I was at the point where I was like no I can't do this or like no I need to be there because these kids need me and like treated them as if they were like my own children and like granted that's what parents want and need and they want to hear that but at the same time I'm not a parent you know like I don't have kids of my home and me showing up every single day um, and disregarding myself, right? Right now, in this day and age, as somebody that's single, it being that, you know, not married and um, I don't have any kids, it was like really concerning because now when I do have my kids, now I'm gonna feel like I've been doing this for all my life and like I might feel a bit burdened and I, I have to take a step back and like realize like, girl, what is it that you actually want? What is it that you actually want to do? Is your voice heard? Is there a difference that you can make here? You know, is there any difference that you can make? Yes, you show up every day and like that makes a difference in the lives of the kids and they're like really excited, you know, that, you know, Miss Sam is here. She's here, she's showing up, she's supportive. I know I can talk to her about like anything. Like kids tell you about stuff like, that they're going through. They come to school and they like have this sad face and I'm like, what's going on? My mom yelled at me, like something like that. And I'm like, okay, but what did, we, what did you do? Like I try to get details from them first because then maybe that's something that I don't even need to really address with their parents. I'm like, well, think about this. Like if you weren't going to bed when they sent you to, to go to bed, then you know, like I get it. We shouldn't raise our voices, but we're all human. We're adults and sometimes that does happen. And I'm not saying it's okay, but you also need to make sure that you're listening. Okay? And then in that moment when you don't feel okay, like you can say mom like or dad or whoever. I didn't feel comfortable when you yelled. Like I understand. I'm gonna do what you're telling me to do, but I just didn't feel comfortable when you yell. Next time can we think of something else that like prevents the situation from happening? It could be you saying, Time for bed, I'm like, okay mom, and I go to bed. Like <laughs> something as simple as that. And like giving them that real like solution has been really helpful because I'm not only helping kids like build relationships with their friends, like with their family too. Like I want them to be really healthy in every area of their lives, you know? So like I think about those things as well. And I have to keep taking the steps forward and back and really think like, are you making a difference here? Like what is the difference that you're making? I'm gonna pause again because I'll try to figure out what I'm doing with my eyes. I really don't know, I'm really confused. Um, about like what I'm gonna do with my eyes because I don't know, it's a little complicated. It's a little complicated. First of all, <laughs> I look correctly. <laughs> don't worry, I'll put color back soon. Don't worry. That looks so funny. I have like <laughs> when you're in any space, I think it's really important to think about the impact that you're making and what your presence means, right? What does your presence mean to others that are around? Ooh, wow, 
its colors. Purple. I'm just going to start light and then I'm going to build. I'm probably going to do just purple. Yeah, but I have to start light and then build. <gasps> Such a pretty color. We started with that. Now we're gonna build two more here. And then I feel like I want the drama, to be honest, to be on the lid, so. Or I might do like a split lid style, so let's see. Yeah, I like this drama. I feel like, oh my gosh, it's such a pretty color. Y'all see this? I have nothing to match with it, by the way, but I like the color. I really hope this light is helping y'all make this look because I'm be so sad. <laughs> Alright, I'm lost. I don't know what I'm doing now. Oh, I could do. Um, I really want to do a little bit of an eyeliner style, like right here. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Where it's like the eyeliner and then the other eyeliner style right there. But I need more of this color on the lid, so. Disappear. It's getting lost. Okay. But now that I've done that, I'm going to do the same thing to the other eye. I'm just gonna build it. Build it up. I'm doing tri tri trigonal, trigonal, and then sunbird. And then afterwards, I'm putting on the lid and then building back up with amulet. Like that, and then. I don't know, this shadow, yes, it's pigmented, but it also has like a bit of an ashy feel to it. So I'm going to have to really clear, fix that up a little bit. Um, no, it's not a makeup tutorial. It's really not. But um, I want to still have this look really nice, you know? Well, it's nice as it can look, because I'm just winging it. Ah, get it, winging it. <gasps> no way. This thing is all dry. I'm just gonna do it like that, guys. Um, because I'm I'm jumping around in the story, but it's like all these things that I'm doing, I'm showing up for these kids and I don't have kids on my own. So I had to remind myself of that and really think like, does this make sense? Is this something that, um, not that, something that I want to do, but um, thinking about like the effects that it will have on me in life in general, right? And I had to take a few steps back and really ask myself like, okay, I'm speaking up at almost like every other week basically, I'm in and out of an office to address concerns about safety, about kids feeling supported, about myself feeling supported, about parents feeling supported. And it just seems like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then nothing changes. It's just back to the same thing. And it's been a consistent back and forth multiple times, multiple times, multiple times, multiple times. So the point that now, because I'm addressing these concerns with you, now all of a sudden I'm not doing my job. And all of a sudden I'm not this great, amazing teacher that I know I am, and many people know that I am. And a little humble brag, but your girl was in third grade and helped kids with um, the state exam last year, and every single one of my kids passed their math assessment, math state exam. And with the exception of kids that we already knew and flagged that could potentially not pass or need additional support. Um, and it was only a few, it was like maybe three, right? Three kids that did not pass the yearly um, state exam. So like, 
yes, I didn't carry that weight all on my own because, I, you know, um, as a grade, we worked together. But I was the only teacher in that classroom um, in third grade, <laughs> which is another story for another day and another time. But um, I really helped to support those kids. And I really saw a lot of growth. And, like, I worked my butt off. I feel like so successful last year because I know that I did everything that I needed to do and I was really supportive and I came into the new year doing exactly that. Granted, there's different systems and things that were changing that I just didn't agree with and just didn't sit right with me and it's like, okay, now where's the joy? You took away this thing, you took away that thing. Now it's just like, kids are expected to do this because they're expected to do this. First grade? Well, okay. And like, I am always known as like the fun teacher because like, I like to have fun. When kids have fun, I have fun. When I have fun, they have fun. Like, it's just like a collaborative thing. And I just want to have fun with kids, but also make sure that they learn. And last year, we had a lot of fun, but we also learned a lot. And this year, I want to say that we did have fun too, to a certain extent, but I was pushing the boundary every single day. I was pushing the boundary because I wanted to make sure that it was an enjoyable experience. And granted, this year, like last year, yes, teachers left. There's a teacher shortage, in case you guys didn't know. Um, so teachers are leaving here and there every single time. Um, this year in particular, I was really stuck on being there, being committed, and staying throughout the entirety of the school year because those kids lost their teachers, like lost multiple teachers within this school year as well. So like I was the one constant. And it got to the point where that pressure of being the constant every single time really was said to me. Let me do the rest of this makeup. Um, and then I got you out. So I think that's what I'm doing for the shadow. As much as I don't like it, I'm going to clean it up a little bit and then I'm going to go to the next thing. So this is concealer. Um, oh, yeah, I don't know what I'm using. I'm using the Kiss uh, concealer. Listen, everything that I'm using, I'm going to just put in the description box. So yeah, I think I'm This is like the leader of the team. We're gonna call her Sally. Sally was someone that I worked with my second year. I was actually um, supporting her in her development, um, and you know, becoming a like a well-rounded teacher, um, amongst other people that were also get. She was also getting support from. So Sally, um, I guess, was with the grade for time after time after time. I didn't move to any other grade. I have the experience of like teaching other grades and so on, which I was, I'm really grateful for. And I feel like it makes me like really aware of like what kids are going into and what um, they're coming from, like where they're coming from. Or regards to academics. Um, so, um, Sally was someone that I considered to be my friend, or <laughs> so I thought. Um, and working with Sally, I was like, okay, you know what, the new year, let's do it. Let's work together. Let's have this unbeatable, unstoppable team. And only to find out, Sally, who's one of my friend, is actually going behind my back and talking about me and my experience and the fact that she has this role, which I was very clear, like, when we go into the new school year, I don't want it, I don't need that kind of pressure, I don't need that kind of um, responsibility. That was not something that I was interested in doing, right? And I was very clear about that. And Sally loves doing that. Like, she loves, like, being in charge and kind of like knowing what's going on and like having a say in all of those things. Amazing. It works out because I don't want it. You want it. Great. So Sally is meeting with other people and saying, well, I do this and she does that and I do this and she does that. But it's not just in that way. It's like, well, my way is better and like I'm more experienced and I'm better and this, that and the other. And like even talking about the team and it's like, well, you know, um, there's nothing great about my team. It's like, I'm part of that team, so there's nothing great about me. Someone who I thought was my friend, and I thought it was reciprocal, because you don't share your life story, but at least I don't, um, and I never have. Thank God I didn't, but it's just weird to me that you share your life story and hope and pray the person doesn't tell the people that are involved, <laughs> right? Which I'm not like that. I'm not going to do that, but if I was, like, you would hope that you didn't just pour out your heart and soul and your dirty laundry to me, right? You would hope. But everybody's different. I know if I share something with somebody, I'm not going to stop 
back. I'm not gonna, you know, whatever. So Sally is talking about me and to the point that now I'm being targeted and getting all these random emails about like, oh, she's choosing to do things because yeah, I'm gonna do things my own way and I, I can stand on that and I can say this is for the betterment of the kids and at the end of the day, it was. They really enjoyed coming to school. Like my attendance was amazing. Kids wanted to be there. They were just like one-off kids. But overall, my class was excited to the point that, like, if they have a doctor's appointment, you know doctor's appointment excuse, excuse you from school. Usually, it's supposed to, right? Just like how a doctor's appointment sometimes excuses from work. Because, like, yeah, I'm going to school after. Like, they come to school right after. Or, like, they come to school and then they leave early for the doctor's appointment because they want to be in school. And they want to know what's going on. They don't want to miss out on anything. They want to find out about their friends. They want to be there. So it goes to show, like, feeling that joy and the support in the classroom was really something. And like, parents were very transparent with like, we say, this is what's going on. Like, this is what we experience. This is like, something that can mess up their day. So I'll give you a heads up, because you're with them all day. Like, parents were very, very um, supportive. And like, man, they I called them my co-teachers because the day went as good as it could because I knew that parents were on my side and I was on their side and we were supporting one another. So, Sally is saying all of these things and now, after I'm like addressing things and obviously not supporting the lies that parents are being told, um, parents are obviously gonna ask questions. So I'm not gonna say, oh, you were lied to. I'm not gonna say this person lied, but I will say this is our policy and you can check this and this is like, how you can double check and fact check or whatever the word it is that you want to call it. This is where you can get your accurate information from. That was it. So parents started asking for the child as they should because I'm doing it, but it doesn't make sense if I'm the only one that's concerned. Oh, well, the parents are also on board. No, but now they're not on board. Now the parents are doing their part and they're saying, I don't like what you're doing to my child. I don't like the way you're treating my child. I don't like what it is that you're giving to my child. I don't agree with it. All of those things. And parents are like the best, <laughs> the best at this because obviously it's their kid. And if they don't feel comfortable, if they don't like something, like they should be the ones speaking up because that's how that change is going to happen. So let's put a target on my back because now you're not supporting us so we don't support you now everything you're doing is terrible you're this terrible person you're this terrible teacher uh, not, not terrible person because it's not personal right it's never personal in a professional setting it's you're a terrible teacher and obviously they didn't say it in those words but it was like the conversation was leading to that and i'm not stupid like i can tell and i can see and i can sense it and it's like okay i'm not appreciating I'm not supported here. There's times I reach out and ask for help and support in the classroom or with kids or whatever the case is, and no one comes. No one comes. And people are wondering about like that first grade teacher that was shot by that first grader. And yeah, granted, he shouldn't have a gun in school. But teachers are very observant. And we're with the child all day, every day. So if we flag something to you, flag it means bring it to your attention that this is something that is concerning and I need help and support in this because it, oh, I need help and support in this because it can go left real fast. Please listen. That teacher knows what she's talking about. And he's when your safety is threatened as a teacher, you have to make very quick decisions because you also want to make sure that the kids are protected. You want to make sure that their safety is number one. So like, it's natural for a teacher in fire drills or in a shelter in and all those things to like, and just a thing, like if something was to happen, I'm going. Like, it's like, you don't want that. That's not the ideal think that's not the ideal situation you want to be in but if in a case of an emergency you're not going to say this child go or that no you're going to say Shh, be quiet you're going to push them all to where they need to be make sure they're all there and then if worse comes to worse you're going to be first like that's just what it is so like when you think of the safety of a child um and you think about 
of course you think about your safety but when it's like a child threatening your safety like there's only so much you can do all right and unfortunately i've had a child in my class where long story short short his history is not the safest you know he joined my class and he only lasted for a week because behaviors but also like serious safety concerns that i was supposed to find out about <laughs> but that's how god works i wasn't supposed to find out about this information and it was shared to me and um it was shared to me by multiple people right including the um the person that was like friends with one of my leaders and i guess they're not supposed to tell me but they did it came up and why am i not supposed to know where this child is coming from and like the history they had like what could have happened in my classroom and granted the child stayed in the classroom for about a week because attendance or like just consequences that they had that you know uh led to them not being in the school but i found out about it um like after the fact and when i addressed it because i'm gonna bring it up you know say i know about this and like you didn't tell me and i didn't feel safe in my classroom um because one i knew that the potential but i didn't know it to that extent and so you're telling me that you jeopardize the safety of myself and my scholars by omitting information that i should have been very much aware of that was a straw and then to find out that there was a parent that was lied to about a service that was going to be given to them yes. and this is like a child that's um going to be classified on you know having like special services so like i can't say names obviously for obvious reasons um, I can't really give out too much information for obviously reasons, but um, let's just say this child was supposed to get support and the meetings were prolonged and not prolonged. They kept pushing back the meetings. The, these meetings are supposed to happen last year. And they kept getting pushed back and pushed back to the point that I'm like, other kids are getting meetings. Like I'm legit like leading other meetings for other kids. What's the the hold up with this child so then to find out that the parent was told that they were going to be getting exactly what they were supposed to be getting with me oh. it makes me so sad and like i just put on concealer so i'm not gonna cry <laughs> um but yeah it makes me emotional because So, yeah, in America, I know there's capitalist systems that are meant to benefit people <laughs> in certain positions. I'm not one of those people. Teachers are not one of those people that gets benefits because kids need additional services. You get benefits because you're certified to do those things, but you don't get benefits because there's a certain amount of kids that have this or that. No, you don't. Right? At least not in my experience. And that's not even something that I think I would want. Like, this is a different conversation. But anyways, I understand that people stand to benefit from certain things. But then to lie and jeopardize a child's future because of it, that's where I draw the line. That's where I drew the line. So I started plotting and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to just do what I want to do and what I need to do for these kids, right? And I'm going to speak up and I'm going to say what I need to say in the moment every single time. And it got to the point where I wasn't even speaking to the, to Sally. That was her name, right? I wasn't even speaking to Sally. And like, granted, I get that she is the leader of the team. But everything comes through the actual leader <laughs> of the, like my actual boss. So I went directly to her. And anything that I needed to address, I went directly to her about. But I, I knew that. I needed to say my piece because anytime that I'm, I feel a certain way, you're not going to say, oh, I'm shocked or I'm confused about X, Y, and Z. Like, I'm coming to you or I'm talking to you about it. And I'm raising concerns to you. And one of the things that I didn't feel safe about was that because Sally was 
basically like targeting me in a way that is like, oh, well, I didn't talk to you about this, or I didn't talk to you about that. And it's like talking to me and berating me in front of my children. And, you know, I say my children in my class, right? And even like in front of her own class. And it's like kids can, they notice things. They're like, oh, well, you know, this person has the final say, even though my teacher told me this. Like this person is talking to my teacher about this thing. And obviously they're at a disagreement. Is my teacher gonna listen? Is my teacher gonna do what she said? Blah, blah, blah. You know? So like I think even in that moment, like even as I'm trying to uh, address it and say like this shouldn't happen in front of kids, you're still continuing. You're still saying your piece and you feel like your final say needs to be heard. So no, I don't wanna hear anything you have to say. And so I get it, like that's that was like the start, but I was at the point where I needed everyone to see what was happening so even in a meeting once sally was like i need to check in with you and i was like i don't feel safe i don't want to talk to you we don't need to check in meet me outside meet me outside those are fighting words you're telling me to cat like meet you outside like even if it's outside the room meet you outside so I, I didn't feel sick, so like it was to the point that I did get up and I went closer to where there was a meeting happening with my other leaders and I needed them to hear if she got loud or anything that she tried to say or do because that's how unsafe I felt in the building and in her presence. And as much as I tried to put on a, uh, a smile and I tried to act like everything was okay, I feel like people were picking up on certain things and it... I was checked out. It was the point that I was checked out. After I heard all the things that they were doing and saying and everything that they were changing this year and just the way that I was being treated, um, I was checked out. I was like, how do you show up every single day? And granted, I was still smiling and like trying to have fun with the kids and do fun things, but it, it's so hard like putting on a show every single day, every single moment of the day. And I, I want to say I feel like I was successful to a certain extent of like not really showing my kids what was happening behind the scenes and that was really important to me because they're kids at the end of the day and they don't need to see that they don't need to understand like adult issues and adult drama they don't need to no, they're kids so I really tried my best to make sure that they weren't like fully aware of like what was actually happening behind the scenes um, but kids are smart and I'm sure they picked up on one or two things not everything obviously so on top of me reaching out for support every single time I needed it, right? And saying my piece to my direct leader about concerns I've had and quote unquote it being addressed. No, it was not being addressed. It's more so like I will address it. I will talk to the person about it, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, this is somebody that you are backing because you chose them to be the lead of the team. Like it's not like a, a, a it is much, I guess, or whatever, but you chose this person to be the lead of the team. Clearly, you saw something in them. There's something that about them that you're backing up. So if they're a problem, you're a problem too. And so I got to the point where I was like, you need to make a finalizing decision about what you want to do. Are you going to stick it out and like put on a brave face and just like allow these things to happen in front of you? Like despite how much you advocated, are you still going to continue letting these things happen? Or are you going to, like, because at the end of the day, my voice, I feel like wasn't being heard and there wasn't a difference. And when you feel like you're in a place where you're not making a difference, where you feel like no matter what you say or do, things are just not going to change, I knew that it was time for me to go. And to be honest, I thought it was time for me to go, as in, like, girl, that year ends, you're out, right? Because I committed to a full year. Like, what teacher wants to leave their babies in the middle of the school year, with the school year not being over? That was such a hard decision for me to make. But I was like, I, I'm checked out. Like, at the end of the year, afterwards, I'm not coming back. Like, I knew it was not coming back, right? Like, I, I knew I couldn't do another year. There's conversations I have with the parents, I'm like, yeah. I don't think I'm gonna make it next year. Like, y'all can come visit me, I'll come visit y'all, but I don't think I'm making it next year. And like, I was very, very transparent about that with my, um, with a lot of my friends. 
Um, but granted, you have to tell your leader whatever you got to tell them because you want to see if they have plans to change. You want to see if they have plans to make things better. Especially because I've, I've been advocating the same things that I'm concerned about. But no, there, there were no changes. If any change, it was more drastic, leading to the opposite end, which is not where I'm trying to go to. I'm trying to help support kids, not make them to right school. Okay? Let's, let's start with that. I don't want kids to dread coming to school. I don't want kids to dread talking to me. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? So, that was like a really big thing for me. And I was like, I need these kids to feel heard and feel celebrated and feel supported. So, um, I knew I wasn't coming back the following year. I was like, let me just think it through. I can make it to the, the end of the school year. But then, I had a meeting with my principal and she was basically like talking about like, oh, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. Um, and then I was like, not that you didn't do this and you didn't do that, but basically like, you are not meeting all our expectations of how you should run your classroom, right? And I was very clear that your expectations of how I should run my classroom is not true of who I am as a teacher. And I started citing my experience the previous year, last year, where I was literally by myself for the majority of the year, and I ran the classroom the way I wanted to run it, and my kids enjoyed it, and we had a great time, and they made so much growth. And like, I truly enjoyed teaching. Despite the trouble, despite all, everything that was happening, I truly enjoyed teaching last year. It was a, di it was a different world, different. It was different, okay? Um, but then, <sighs> She brought up that, well, you know, we've given you feedback about, um, I don't even remember what she said, but it was like, basically saying like, no, your class wasn't aware it is the last year. I was like, are you talking about the same person that like, did you not hear what I said? Like, it was just so weird in the conversation for her to talk about something completely different from what we were talking about. And I was like, okay, you're talking about me being gone home and in kids' faces about teaching. That's not my teaching style. So I'm sorry I didn't teach the way that you wanted me to teach, but didn't kids grow? Like, I just cited all the data to you. Didn't they grow? Didn't they make all this growth? Aren't they better? Like, compared to how those kids are behaviorally now, they were angels last year. Like, I'm not saying it's because of me as a teacher only. Like, obviously, kids are getting older, the attitudes are developing, and all those things are happening. But you didn't have some of those behaviors and concerns that are happening um, in the next grade. So, it goes to show that I'm doing something. And, like, if we're talking about academics, we're talking about behavior, whatever it is we're talking about, I did something. <laughs> and I could brag every day, all day, about the amazing work that I did with those kids last year, because I know I did good, and no one can take that away from me, ever. So, like, I was talking about that, and she's like, oh my god, I'm like, what? Like, we're not having the same conversation, so I just ended it, like, I stopped talking, and I was just like looking, and just like nodding, because like, at that point, I was like, okay, I get what's happening here, like, your agenda is to tell me that I'm not doing a great job, and that's fine, I'll listen, but do you understand how much you need me? Do you understand how important I am to this team and this community? So the fact that you're telling me that I'm not a great teacher and then to add to say, I know you're not the type to um, leave in the middle of the year. So we still have the rest of the year. Like we want to see this growth. We want to see this development in this area, in that area. And I'm like, I can take feedback. Like feedback is so important and essential for teachers in our development, but if everything you're saying is that I didn't do the things that you wanted me to do the way that you wanted me to do it and you're ignoring the results and you're ignoring the things that actually do work, then I don't want to hear it to be honest because if the end goal is the same and our morals and everything that we stand for is the same, then why should I take out who I am as a person? With that on top of it, you are part of the the reason that these kids aren't getting the services. You are part of the reason that I don't feel safe in this school building. Like, you are part of everything that's going on right now. So I'm like, do I listen to this? Like, or do I move on from this? And so, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, 
uh, trying to decide. Um, this year alone, I called out for like actual illnesses for um, bereavement in my family, for genuine bereavement in my family, and for just mental health reasons. This was the most I have been absent from school in my entire five years being there. And it's to the point that like I just don't want to be there. I need to be with my family. I'm gonna take all the time that is that I can get. Usually I would take a day or two, but no, I'm gonna take the full amount. Um, I'm not feeling well. Like I'm gonna take the day. I'm not gonna push through and try to, like, oh, you know, sorry guys. No, like I'm gonna take the time that I need to take care of me, and that's what I've been doing this school year. But then all of those things tied together, and me realizing that I'm not valued, and I just had to process. But it takes me a while to like sit down and think about. Um, what it is that someone has said and like the approach that I want and so I said that I thought about it. I was like the issue here is that I'm not appreciated the issue here is that this other person has your ear and you're obviously following along with them because it's someone that you appointed as your leader um even if you don't agree with the, what they're saying and the problem here is I'm the only one speaking up everyone else on the team is just like Ooh, I'm going with it but I'm the only one speaking up so that's adding to the problem because it's like, no, this is a Q problem. Not everyone else feels this way. Even though everyone else is bringing the concerns that they're sharing it with me, I'm like, you should speak up. You should say something. Let them hear you. Because now they don't think you have a problem. Like, speak up, speak up, speak up. And no one's speaking up. So that was another issue as well. And I got to the point where I realized really early on that, like, I'm just not going to be here next year. But also, like, how do I push through? for the remainder of this year because I'm struggling to figure out sorry guys I'm struggling to see how that's a possibility and so I started like thinking about what I'm going to do next year I was like I see myself in my classroom maybe just back here do I see myself working remotely maybe that's going to help me with my YouTube channel I'll be able to focus more on like editing videos and so on while also working a full time job and what is it that I see myself doing so I started applying for a few jobs and to be honest because there is a teacher shortage as I said a few people actually reached out and like did you want to apply for this year like do you want to come for this year I was like no that's not something I'm interested in right now but thank you for the offer thank you for you know letting me know that this is something that's available. But then, I really thought about it, and then I saw, I saw the salary that I was getting for the next school year. And guys, I told you I recently graduated my master's in June. I already knew my salary in January of last year for the new school year. So, okay, this is what I'm going to get. They didn't consider the master's that I would be graduating and would be having a master's. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Maybe the following year is something that they're going to be like, okay, she now has it. She's had it for like almost a year now. Let's up this a little bit more. The salary I saw was a slap in the face to the point that I was like, <laughs> like, who? what? Do you not know who I am? I'm a child of God. Like, the reason I'm here is because I'm meant to be here. Like, all these things I started thinking about, I'm like, it's not about the money, but also, like, I need to be rewarded for, like, all the amazing things that I've done. And I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that last year when I did so amazing. And apparently, I'm not doing so great this year. So, like, why didn't I see something last year? Then? Like, if that's the case, like, if, let's just say what she's saying is true, and I'm like, this terrible teacher that just does not care about kids and does not do their part and all these things right why didn't last year when I made this amazing growth and all this you know like I'm confused so I was like yeah I'm definitely not gonna come back next year but also I don't even know if I can make it to June I don't see myself making it to June and I reached out to a few of my colleagues and like really close to their friends and like we started talking and I was like guys this is what's going on they were all shocked because like they also cited like the amazing things that I not only did last year but I'm doing something with my kids this year and they were like is she crazy like what is she talking about 
like, because, you know, these are colleagues that, like, I've known for a very long time. They don't necessarily see me on a daily basis um, and don't necessarily, like, even know who my kids are. But they know based on, like, me reaching out to them and, like, asking for support and, like, resources and things that I need help in and, like, feedback from them. Like, I would show them videos and all that stuff to get additional support in, like, this area. Guys, what do you think I could have done better here and so on? Right? So, like, I have this, this group of people that are really supportive and really helping me in my development, right, outside of the school building as well. So, I'm, like, doing a lot to make sure that my kids are getting the support that they need. And now you're going to tell me that I'm not doing enough and I'm not enough for these kids. So, I was like, maybe I need to start considering some things from now. And at some point, I was like, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's next for me. But I just know I can't be here anymore. I know I can't be here anymore. And I just kept thinking about it and I kept saying it. And it was so heartbreaking to even come to that realization of like, one day, I'm just going to walk in and I'll know this is the day that I won't be here anymore. And telling the kids was like the hardest, most gut-wrenching thing I've ever had to do but I think what I would really regret is if I walked through those doors that same day that I knew I wasn't coming back and didn't say anything if I knew I had walked out of the, those doors without even a hug without even a goodbye to those kids I knew it would have been a terrible rest of the year for them and for me because how can you say that you are here and committed and there for the entire school year and then say you're not coming back. How can you go back on your word? How can you say that I'm turning away from these families and choosing me? But it was a decision that I had to make because year after year after year, I was making decisions for parents and for kids that it wasn't a burden. Like, let me be very clear. It wasn't a burden, but it was something that wasn't necessarily beneficial for me. I was thinking about that. And this year I had to make a decision that was beneficial for them and for me. Like you have to understand that teachers are going to be, it's part of the experience, it's part of schooling, depending on the experience that the teachers have, depending on the support that they have. And let this be a lesson to you. If you're in any place where you don't feel supported, where you don't feel appreciated, where you feel like you're not, your voice is not heard and there's no change that you personally can make, you, there's no reason for you to be there. And you're lying to yourself if you say you're okay with just staying with the job where what you say and what you do doesn't matter. And that's how I felt going to work every single day. The difference was the kids. The difference was the parents. But outside of that, I'm not with the kids every single minute. I'm not with the parents every single minute. I have to deal with other adults in the building. I'm not saying everyone was terrible. I had some people that I really did get along with and was really supportive. But as a whole, as a unit, um, and especially from the bottom, from the top down. One of my favorite parts, the way the mist comes out is so beautiful. And I know that my face is going to be good. And then now we're going to do the highlight. Can't forget the highlight. I've been using the Fenty Beauty, but I think I need to um, switch it up to her other shades because I have all these and I don't use all of them. So I think it's, it's just time for me to choose one shade and just have it put it to maybe I'll do a gold for the summertime. I don't know. All I like is gold. Here's the gold. Like this. Because Look at the highlight. No. Now whatever's left over, I usually put in different parts that I want to be a little shiny, 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 shiny. All the way in, all my life. Yep, I've been shining, shining, and winning. We do it. I don't know what song I'm singing right now. Oh. 
<laughs> okay, I need to wrap up because I've been here for a while and I'm tired and I have to dye my box here and I have work stuff to do when I get home. So let's let's finish this up real quick. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel below and click the bell button so you're always notified whenever I post a new video. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Be blessed, spread love, and stay beautiful inside and out. Bye! Ah, 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 ah. I don't know what is happening.